Hey, how you doing? My name is Chris. Welcome to my shop. Make the uh, first cut. Uh, you know, since my recent uh, shop accident, which by the way, I've yet to hear the end of, but just fine, I deserve it. Um, but it's kind of limited what I can and can't do in the shop. Um, but I can do uh, one thing that I figured I'd pass along for maybe uh, people who are just getting into woodworking, or maybe just some people who have questions. Uh, and that has to do with finishing. Um, and I can actually do that with a hurt uh, finger. Uh, but today we're going to talk about staining and uh, the do's and don'ts when it comes to staining. And the best wood who actually uses an example is pine. Because pine is probably the hardest wood to get a good, clean, even stain on. And I can tell you about why that is in just a little bit. But stick around. Introduction to staining. Headed your way next. Okay, so why is pine such a hard wood to uh, finish? And by that I mean get a good even coat over the top of it. Well, pine is very soft wood, first of all. Um, but pine also, by the sheer nature of the wood, has um, a very different absorption, absorption rate uh, across the face of it. Um, like this spot right here might take a ton of stain. It will soak it in. Where this spot over here might not take as much in it, so you end up with an uneven stain or an uneven finish looking across the piece. And pine is absolutely the worst. There are other woods that blotch as well, because that's what we're talking about. When you get a dark spot and a light spot, the dark spots on the wood are what we call blotching. And it can happen in any certain area. It won't. It, I can do this entire piece right here with stain. This part will look wonderful. This part will be dark for no apparent reason. It's just the nature of the beast when it comes to pine. Very hard wood to actually put a good, good finish on. And it frustrates a lot of people because when they first get into woodworking, most people get into woodworking, they start using pine because pine is affordable, it's readily available, and they, you know, spend all this time making a really neat project and they go to put a stain on it, and then they have sheer disappointment because it just looks horrible. So um, what we're going to do today, that's why I chose this wood to show you how to put a stain on a piece of wood. Because uh, the principles that uh, you would use uh, in finishing pine are the same principles you could use if you were doing walnut, oak. You pick the wood. It's it's the basics are the basics. Uh, and the point that we're trying to get across it today is that we're looking to get a good even finish across the piece of wood so it looks consistent, it looks nice, and it's something that's pleasing to the eye. So as you can see, this is a pine or a Douglas fir that I got from the big box stores. It's just a it's an off cut from a two by six. Um, that I took the bandsaw and I ripped it down the middle so I would get a, a book match uh, face here. That would give me a consistent face here and one here because you can't get much closer to being the same piece of wood than a book match right here. So when I apply a wood stain to this piece, we can compare it to how that stain is going to look on this piece when we use two different types of pre-stained finishers because, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to introduce a third piece into this whole thing that we're doing today. And this piece right here, uh, what I will do is I'll go through the process of sanding it uh, up to the point that we want to sand it. And then I'll put a stain just on the wood without using either a pre-stained finisher or pre-color conditioner. And I'll show you the results of what happens with this. And then we'll apply uh, the pre-stained finisher here to one piece, the pre-color conditioner to another piece. Then we'll stain those and then we'll be able to line them up and I can show you the differences between the different products and the way they turned out on the wood. One of the first basic necessities that you need to learn is how to actually sand the wood that you're going to be finishing. And that, I know that sounds like stupid, but there are people that, believe, me, believe it or not, actually overdo the sanding. If you're going to stain a piece of wood, the last thing you want to do is over sand it. Um, because here's what happens. The higher up in the grits you get, the more you're actually burnishing the wood meaning that you're actually sealing the wood off more and more the higher the grit that you go up. And so therefore the wood won't take stain as well if you left it a little uh, at a lower grit. And that should actually be good news for those of you who don't, you know, spend your Sunday afternoons looking forward to sanding. Um, and I don't know many people that do. The sanding process that I personally use on any piece of wood that I'm going to stain, it doesn't matter, um, is the following. If it needs an 80 grit to start, I'll start with an 80 grit. I go from 80 to 100, from 100 to 150, from 150 to 180, and then I stop. Stop at 180. My opinion and my experience shows that that is a point where the wood will still accept stain evenly and absorb it in so you do get the color. And if you go to 220, you start seeing less absorption in the wood and you don't get the color that you're hoping for. So. My suggestion and my opinion is sand up to 180, then stop. 
that's when you want to that's when you want to add your pre-stain or your pre-color conditioner and then stain your wood at 180 finish it after that the products we'll be using today are i chose ones that i, I felt were probably very readily available so this could apply to just about anybody who's watching this video um they are uh, minwax products the min minwax stain we'll be using is uh, english chestnut this is basically because it's the darkest stain i have in my shop currently and i thought that would probably show up best on this camera um, but before we get to any of the stain, I'm going to use the min this, this stain on all three pieces so you can see the differences. Um, let's call this piece here, we'll call this piece piece A. On piece A, I will be using the Minwax pre-stain, also readily available wherever you find this. You can normally find that as well. Uh, we'll call this piece B, and I'll label the two pieces. And I'll use what I is basically my go-to pre-color conditioner, which is, you know, the same thing as a pre-stain. Um, this is not readily, readily available in the box stores. I can tell you where you, you can get it once the video is, we're closer to finishing this thing, but it's really not important right now. Uh, the process on how we put this on is what the, is the key here. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get the sanding out of the way. There's no need for you to have to watch that. And I will uh, come back and we'll get the pre-stain put on the pieces. And then after that has cured and dried, we'll do the staining and we'll come back and take a look and see how it all comes out. All right, sanding is done. I started out with 100 on each of these pieces, went to 150, and then went to 180, sanded them all uh, equally. I didn't sand one more than the other or one less than the other. Um, but before we move on to the staining, we're putting the uh, pre-stain finisher or pre-color conditioner on this wood. I want to make note of a few things. Um, I hope you can see this on this camera. The, uh, the pine inherently, because it's such a knotty wood, it does have discoloration in the wood already, and there's nothing we can do about that. Um, there's, piece, there's little spots on each pieces of these uh, boards that I don't want to mistake for blotching after we put the stain on it. So if we can just kind of make a mental note of where those are on these boards, we can take into consideration they're going to show up after we put the stain on it. So at this point in time, we're not going to use any pre-stain finisher on this piece. This is the one we're going to do just raw with the stain. Uh, this is piece A that we talked about. I labeled that A because we're going to be using the uh, Minwax pre-stain on this one. And we'll be using my go-to finish, uh, excuse me, pre-color conditioner that I use uh, on piece B. Uh, let's, we'll get that applied right now, and then after that has cured and dried, we'll put the stain on and we'll see what we get. Okay, after following the manufacturer's directions on how to apply this stuff, you know, I'll you know, read the directions on the back. Um, I've got the uh, Minwax pre-stain on uh, board A. I've got my stain that I usually use, uh, I mean my pre-stain uh, that I usually use on uh, board B here, following the instructions that, were, that come with that. And then we're going to be, uh, now we can uh, stain these pieces, but... Uh, Quickly, I, I, normally when I stain wood, I use um, uh, an HBLP gun, uh, and that's just because you can really control the amount of stain that goes on the piece when you use a spray gun, so it makes a lot of sense to spray a stain if you can. Um, I know a lot of people don't, so we're not going to do it today either, and mostly it's because I have a couple visitors to my shop today, and I'm going to get them to do the work for me. So, uh, let me introduce you to who uh, came by to say hi to me. Oh, don't let anybody into Connecticut now. Get in here, you guys. What are you doing here? Michael Murray, Chris Martin, say hello, how you, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? All right, well, you know what, Chris, he doesn't know this, but I've already decided that you and I are going to, like, have a cold one, Sounds and we're going to put him to work. So if you don't mind, let's, uh, we're going to let Mike go ahead and stain this wood for us, because I, I want to be impartial here. I don't want to be thinking I'm playing games. So Mike's going to do the work, and we're going to stand back and take a look. All righty. Okay, so um, obviously you saw Mike do it. Uh, Mike, which one do you think came out the best? I mean, which one looks the best to you? Definitely B. We've got some... A little, little blotching on that one. A lot of it on this. That's the one that didn't have any, any pre-stain finish on it. Correct. Well, let me pull Chris Martin in here. Chris, let me take a look at him. Which one do you think looks the better one? Well, yeah. I would, I would go with the middle one. Definitely. You can see the blotching on both sides. So... 
Cool. Well, I mean, I'll pull the camera and give you guys a better shot of what we're talking about here, but I think you'll see the difference as well. That's probably a better look for you in what uh, Chris and uh, Mike were talking about. Um, the differences in these piece, uh, pieces is fairly significant. Um, this is the one that we left untreated. That was just st straight stain onto pine, which is, by the way, never a good idea. Um, but the blotching in that is uh, pretty massive. Um, and then there's this with the Minwax pre-stain uh, wood conditioner. Um, and to be honest with you, this is a lot more similar to this than it is similar to that. We got a lot of blotching that happened up and along here. And you can see how the the actual finish isn't isn't as even going across the face. Now, a lot of people are, are so accustomed to seeing pine finished like this that they may say they actually like it. Um, but for my money, I take this result every time. Nice, even color across the wood. Um, and, you know, remember, these were book map book matched pieces of wood, uh, so, you know, if these two products were, you know, acted the same, then these would be exactly the same, but that's obviously not the case. Um, this product is available through one man, and it's the man who makes it, and if you're into woodworking, you're very familiar with this gentleman. His name is Charles Neal. Charles Neal, pre-color conditioner. This stuff lasts a long time. It goes a long, long way. Uh, I tell you what, if you're interested in purchasing this product, um, I have no affiliation with Charles. I mean, I don't make anything of it. But if you are interested in using this product for yourself, I'll leave a link down below in the description as to how you can get it. There you go. Staining 101. And those are just the very basics. We could go into uh, different kinds of stains, what they're made of. I mean, we could talk for hours, but we won't do that. Um, but basic staining and uh, the different results that you can get, depending on what you what product you decide you want to use. Uh, so... Uh, well, I have a more, I'm going to just say thanks to Motor Mike and also Chris Martin for stopping by the shop and helping me out with this, guys. Appreciate it very much. It was, we had a good time. Uh, so there you go. As for me, I'm out of here. You, you get out of here, too. Get out of your shops. Make that first cut. Get something done, okay? I'll talk to you later.